there are multiple ways to look at the disease models, right? One of them is that they're a tool, right? So it is a targeted way of breaking the system, right? And then by perturbing it, you understand a little bit better how it worked when right, it was working, right, right. right? The other way to look at the disease model work is that these are all very complicated disorders, right? Autism is a great example. There are like a thousand autism-related genes. And they do wildly different cell biological things. And we, at a fundamental level, do not understand how genetic perturbation of genes that do completely different things at the level of a single cell could give rise to something that we perceive as being a common endpoint. So that, that lack of understanding really highlights our lack of knowledge about the basics of how the brain right, really right. works in the first place. Um, like you mentioned autism and schizophrenia, where, where quite a lot of those genes, they, the two diseases have in common, and yet, you know, uh, perturbations in the genetics will send one person on a trajectory that ends up with an autism phenotype, which is really very distinct from a schizophrenia phenotype. Yeah. So yeah, we have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn. Yeah, there's yeah. just an enormous amount of yeah. unknown there, right? Yeah. And. Uh, and that's kind of why I feel like we do a bad job of communicating the scale of the challenge. Right, 